right, I've made this video now too many times. And it's over like 20 minutes every time. No one wants to watch 20 minutes of this. The purpose of this video is to share with you a camera that I've enjoyed way more than I thought that I would enjoy. I've never made a video about a camera. I like to take photos. I like to take photos a lot. I've been taking photos non-professionally for whatever the late 90s is from today. So over 20 years. I've shot Nikon. I've shot Fuji. I've never shot Canon. I've tried Sony twice now. Not my thing. And I just recently sold an X-H1, which I think is one of the best built cameras ever made by Fuji. It's, it's, it's just an amazing camera, but it wasn't working for what I needed. And I think that's a good point is you can have an amazing camera. You can have this Leica or whatever the names are, Hasselblad that I see, but that I would never probably buy. But if it doesn't suit what you're trying to use it for, it's worthless, absolutely worthless. You can have a $500 kit from Costco with the two lenses. And if it doesn't make you wanna shoot, it's worthless. So I'll start by saying my number one bit of advice for camera is buy a camera that you will take with you. If you want a camera for sports down the road and that's what you need, then buy that camera. But if you're just looking for a camera to capture moments, don't go buy a sports camera. Hell, don't buy a DSLR. Buy something. I don't know if you can see this. This is my pocket. And this is my camera. That's my pocket. That's my camera. It's an X100B. That's my dog making noise with his claws. <laughs> he wants to be in the shot so bad. He's a good-looking dog. So, just lay down. He's growing. This is a camera that I wanted to make the video about. The Nikon Z50. If I laugh, it's because a dog is licking my feet because he wants to be in the video so bad. Z50. It's a little tougher in this. The hoodie, it works just fine. It's in my pocket. You can't see it. It's out. That's what I want out of a camera. I want it in my pocket. I want to take it with me to dinners when my wife doesn't force me to leave it at home. I want to take it to, you know, any event that we go to where cameras are allowed. I want to, okay, let's see, just give in for a moment. Come here, look. So, I don't know if you can see this crazy dog, but he is a crazy dog. Okay, now we have to keep him from going totally crazy. But the number one thing I recommend is get a camera that you'll take with you anywhere. Um, my favorite camera of all time is the X100 series. It doesn't matter if it's the X100B or the F or the dog's claws that are gonna be the star of this video. <laughs> He's actually moving the, oh, dogs. So, Chubb, go. Chubb, go. <laughs> He's in timeout. If he was less than 90 pounds and could sit in my lap and be cute on video, he would be sitting there. But he's loud and he's crazy. They told us they would get less crazy. Yeah, you, stay. The camera. Get a camera that you will take with you everywhere. That's the camera you want if you're not buying a sports camera or a, you know, you're not a professional photographer. This is an enthusiast on discussion here. The reason I'm making this video is, after years of shooting with Nikon, DSLR, years of shooting with Fuji, mirrorless, several attempts at Sony, I stumbled upon a camera that is probably one of the most fun cameras I've used in a long time, one of the most capable cameras I've used in a long time, and it's that Nikon Z50. This is it with the kit lens. I don't know if you can see, it's not that big. It fits in my pocket, comes out of my pocket. The lens that it comes with is not very big. You can buy bigger lenses. I'm not sure if you can buy smaller lenses. 
But as it stands right there, that's a thousand dollars, which is not a little bit of change. I get that. But for a thousand dollars, what you're getting is an amazing camera. Great autofocus, great colors, great video. Is it pro colors, pro video, pro autofocus? Absolutely not. It's a thousand dollars. It's not five thousand dollars. But it's the first camera that when I leave in the morning, go for a walk, take my kids to school, or do whatever, it's the first camera that has me grabbing it versus an X100. And I love Fuji. I love Fuji cameras. And that's saying a lot, that it's making me grab it. I'm not saying it's better than a Fuji. I still grab my Fuji. I had to go downtown or near downtown LA the other day and I grabbed my Fuji because I know my Fuji is gonna be almost invisible. It's as visible as you can possibly be with a camera. I can go up, take a shot, boom, and I'm done. And you may or may not know that I took a picture of you. And in that part of LA that we were in, I didn't necessarily want people knowing that I was taking pictures of them. I got some good shots. I could do the same thing with the Z50. I just, I grabbed what I knew, to be honest. But the whole point of this video is to share with you the Z50, share with you how much I enjoy it, but also share with you advice of anyone getting into photography, not buying the kit, not buying the camera that on paper is the right camera. Because on paper, Sony's are amazing cameras, and they, they're great for some people. On paper and in real life, they're great for some people. On paper, they're the perfect day after me. In use, I don't enjoy the colors. I don't, editing, don't enjoy editing the colors and the files. I do like the AF, but if I have to choose AF colors, I need balance. You know, Fuji is AF colors. Whereas what I found with the Z50 is, it's AF colors. And for an interchangeable lens, under $1,000, I picked up the 35. I absolutely picked up the 35. It's the best balance that I've found. If I know that I'm gonna take stills and nothing's gonna be moving, I'm probably gonna grab the Fuji. And if I'm just gonna take pictures of my kids around the house and they may be moving or we're gonna catch them on their bikes or go down to the bluff or whatever, probably gonna take the Nikon. So the whole point of this video is just to share with you how much I'm enjoying the camera, how much time I've spent researching and watching videos like this that gave me specs, gave me reviews, that helped me make a purchase, but none of them imparted how fun the camera is how easy it is to use. I can use that Nikon one-handed. Everything is set up on the right side. There's an eye menu, put what you want in there. You can change the ISO, the metering. You can make it simple, you can make it complex. It is not a pro camera. It is not like an entry-level camera, but it can be used by people who are new to photography. And I think it can help you learn fast. And I'll just for a moment say that I think that mirrorless cameras aid in learning photography more or at a faster rate than DSLRs. And you know, one of the main reasons for that is when you shoot with a DSLR, you see the real world. You have no idea if your metering is right, if your, you know, if the shutter speed and the ISO and the aperture are aligning to give you an image with a good balance of light. You have no idea. You could take a shot and you'll take that shot with the zero feedback until you see it on a screen that it's blown out. And maybe you get another chance at that shot, maybe you don't. With a mirrorless camera, it's called what you see is what you get. And when you look through the viewfinder on a mirrorless camera, you're not looking at the real world. You're looking at a movie screen, an EVF, electronic viewfinder. And it is showing you based on your settings, your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO, what that image is gonna look like when you take it. If you reduce the shutter speed, it's gonna get brighter, assuming other things stay constant. If you're in full manual and the picture is perfectly balanced and you want it a little darker, you know, you can, a little more shutter speed and you'll see the image get darker right there in front of you. Or if you're in more of an auto mode, you can adjust the exposure compensation, you know, lighter, darker, and you will literally see the image change. And I think that immediate feedback helps um, people who are new to photography because they can see what they did. 
You know, you didn't take the shot and say, oh, what the hell did I do here? You have no idea, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, what the hell is going on. At that point, you're like, damn it, I screwed the picture up. You know, it's over. You know, with a mirrorless, you can literally, especially if you're looking at the back screen, I mean, it's in the EVF. Again, it's like a movie theater. You put your eye up to it, like this, and everything around is telling you the settings of the camera. He really wants to come back. I had to stop this video because of you. So, long story short, I can't recommend the Z50 enough. Well, let me think what I would say about the Z50. The Z50 comes as a kit. You can buy it as a body. It's like 800, 900 bucks. You can buy it with a 16 to 50. And you can buy it with a 16 to 50 and I think a zoom lens. What I'm reading is a zoom is pretty good, not great. What I am personally experiencing is that the 16 to 50 kit for the money is a stunning lens amazing not indoors you're not going to get you know it's i don't know if it's a 3.5 what is this thing it's a 3.5 to 6.3 by the time you get to 35 millimeters you're probably at 5.6 it's not your portrait lens it's a general lens it's very sharp it is the autofocus is great when you've got light, it's going to give you amazing photos. It's an amazing walk-around lens. Cloudy day, sunny day, take that thing out of a house, outdoors, and you're going to get shots you love. If you want to take indoor photos, yes, you're going to need a faster lens, a 1.8, a 2.8, something like that. Too many people buy cameras. I say too many. People buy cameras. I've done it, uninformed, and I buy the kit lens like that, and I snap a picture of my kids, and the ISO goes straight to... 3200 by the way we're near los angeles the chances of you hearing police sirens or some type of sirens is like 87 percent so and planes and choppers but oh well but too many people buy that camera expect it to work indoors they zoom into 35 on a kit lens they're at f3.6 they're lucky if their shutter speed is like one over 50 and their iso is now over 3000 so you've got bad iso You've got a shutter speed, which is probably gonna, you know, bring some shake in, and you get bad photos. And then people look at the camera and they're like, damn, this camera sucks. I bought the wrong camera. No, like, you didn't buy the right, the wrong camera. The Z50 that I love does exactly that. If I point it to a dark area, I can watch the shutter speed drop and I can watch the ISO go to 5000. Understand what you bought and understand what cameras can do. I grab the 35 1.8 and I aim it in the same spot and I can keep that ISO under 1000 and get amazing shots. So there is some, you know, there is some research and some educating yourself to get, obviously to get better photos as well. But going back, I just want to share, there are birds living there apparently. I just want to share that I love this damn cat. I did not expect to like this camera as much as I like this camera. And I'm not being paid. I was not sent this camera. I, this means stop. This means stop, right? Dude. He's a trained dog. I did not mean to buy this camera. I had no intentions of buying this camera. I was going to buy a Z6. I was going to buy a Canon R or something. I bought an ACC, A6600 and had to pay the restocking fee to return that camera. And now he's laying his head against the base. We're going to move him. What a dog. I swear he's trained. Like, it cost me money to take that Sony back. Although, I'd pay good money to take the Sony back. I, I gotta, I've learned my lesson. I'm not buying any more Sonys unless I become a professional sports photographer. When my kid is playing quarterback or safety or whatever the hell he's playing or soccer, I'll go buy the Sony because I know I'll need it. Until then, I'm just not doing it. So, I don't know what my lighting is getting like. I'll wrap this up. To recap, number one, buy a camera that you will take with you always have a camera that will take you will take with you even if you've got a sports I mean unless you're getting paid no matter what have a camera that you can put in your pocket and take it with you take it with you I mean if you feel better getting insurance on it buy 
spend $75 and get some insurance to where you will take it. You don't care if you drop it. You just freaking log that camera with you no matter what, and you use it. You'll be glad you did. You truly will. That's my number one piece of advice. My number two piece of advice is understand what you have and be patient with it. Understand that a kit lens isn't going to give you you know, non-grainy shots in low light indoors. It's just not. So understand your equipment. You know, take the time to understand if you're getting images that you don't like, is there something about your technique that could fix that? And often there is. You know, if you really gotta have an image indoors, maybe sit the camera on something, then you can lower the shutter speed. You won't get the shake, and you can lower that shutter speed until you get an ISO that creates a good image. Lots of books out there for that. Understanding Exposure by Brian Peterson. That's Brian, B-R-Y-A-N. It's a great book. If you want a book you can just read and, and learn more in a, in, a, you know, in a quick period of time, I think that's a great book. It's an easy read. Um, I haven't read it in a while, but that book helped me a lot. I'm sure there's lots of books out there. Pick one, read one, and learn more. Number three is just... I didn't think that I would like the Z50 as much as I do. And I know I've went on and on about this, but that's kind of the point of this video. This is a Nikon Z50 video. This isn't a Fuji you know, X100 video. I do love those cameras. It's a Nikon Z50, unsolicited, not sent anything, not sponsored, not promised anything. Just wanting to share for those out there who are looking for a camera for a fair price that will give them amazing images and they will, again, number one, take with them. So, hope this has helped. Hopefully my dog will get some attention now that you know, this is almost over. And if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, I don't think I've reached the point of likes mattering, so if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Um, if you're a Sony lover, I may or may not respond. I respect your choice. <laughs> uh, my choice is not Sony. If you like Canon, I do respect, I respect Canon colors, I do. I've never been able to use them. I've always ended up with a different camera, so now I'm ranting. So long story short, uh, it's an amazing camera, the Nikon Z50. It's made me much happier than I expected to make me happy. Uh, it's done a better job than I expected it to do. It's been more fun than I expected it to be and more capable than I expected it to be for the amount of money that I paid for it. So again, if you have questions, let me know. I'm probably gonna do a video on the X100 series because that line of camera deserves a video because I think that's a camera that more people should know about. And I think another video that I'll do is affordable cameras because we don't need to be spending a lot of money on cameras. This thing where you've got to have the latest and greatest, I'm guilty here and there. You know, I have the latest X100, but I also have you know, a XE2 that I love that's, what is it, 10 years old at least. So there's something to be said for all the cameras and lenses out there that are older, that you can buy used, that will give you amazing photos based on your use. You know, Again, if you need tracking, they might not be the right camera don't they could be the right camera they could be the best camera you've ever had so hope this helps um, glad I could share have a nice uh, it's Friday I'm gonna go have some tequila I hope you have a great weekend take care